here again to bring you their best bets and expert picks for every game on this week's NFL schedule. It's the Green Man, brought to you by WSN.com. Hey everybody, welcome to your WSN Weekly NFL Picks Podcast. My name's Ryan Sullivan, joined as always by Mr. Adam Forsyth. I know what you're thinking, why is Ryan talking and Adam is not? Well, generally, when we do our picks show, we do our predictions and whatnot, week to week, uh, you know, I'm, I'm riding this guy's coattails. He, he knows the point spreads, the covers, the, you know, the money lines, he, he's, he's a gem there. But when it comes to the props... I got this down like a fine wine, my friend. So with Super Bowl 2020 coming up and on tap, that means it's prop season. Of course, you've got player props throughout the year, little ones you can do here and there. But the Super Bowl is a different animal altogether. Do you get in on the props, Adam? Absolutely. It's been pretty much our best bets so far this season is the prop game. So every single week we do these recaps and we figured, well, let's let's double down for Super Bowl because we got a couple of weeks leading up to the Super Bowl. And so this week it is the props show, the Ryan Sullivan prop show, because this is your bread and butter. And then oh, yeah. next week we'll be back with the Super Bowl preview. Yeah, this is a prop bonanza. So if you're tuning in thinking, you know what, I'm going to hear some inside info on McCole Hardman, Darwin Thompson, something like that, you might. But you're going to get some more stuff on the J-Lo halftime show, Shakira, we got is some Donald ins- Trump coming out? We got some inside scoops on whether it'll be heads or tails or right down the middle. Oh, buddy, you better believe it. Yeah, the, the, when it comes to prop country, the more obscure, the better. That's why Super Bowl is in a level all on its own. It's absolutely incredible. But before we move forward to Super Bowl 2020, let's talk about some wagers that we threw down uh, this time last week. Now, when we usually end the show, of course, you hear all of our best bets and, and our recaps in the week before, previous for the week ahead but when it comes to game time we like to get in on the live betting a little bit some props some parlays you have any big wins last week absolutely because we taped the show a little bit in advance right and i like to get in right at game time and we recommend that a lot keep an eye on the ta- like the different lines because sometimes there's some really juicy ones out there through wsn.com i found a sweet parlay and it was a four player anytime touchdown parlay that paid eight to one i why not? So it was Aaron Jones, Damian Williams, Derrick Henry, and Raheem Mostert to score an anytime touchdown. And one by one, the check marks hit eight to one. So that cashed in. That paid for my weekend, kept the girlfriend happy, paid for dinner, because otherwise she would have. And boom, I'm in. Yeah, fair enough. That's well played. Some high stakes there. For <laughs> oh, you. It, literally, it was fancy stakes. <laughs> oh, I see what you did. A yeah. little, little pun action. Very nice. Um, yeah, you know, on, on, on my side of things, there was a couple that did not hit. I saw some some huge numbers coming off anytime touchdowns for, and we mentioned them right off the top, McCole Hardman and Darwin Thompson. And I, I saw a couple tosses to the end zone. Darwin was open, a couple to the end zone. McCole was there. And uh, yeah, no, those missed horribly. There's a reason they're ranked so high on the odd sets. So. But that's what you got to do, though, right? With those player props is you it, you take shots at those 8-1, to one, those 10-1s, to because if they hit, it pays off. Yeah. And you got to look at it like all you have to do is hit one out of every eight opportunities, and you're still breaking even. So, like... That's why I kind of like those ones. I mean, you can play the safe bets of the the 50-50 shots sure. if you want to kind of go that way. But I like to just kind of see what sticks and throw a bunch of stuff at the wall. And if it works out, it works out. Yeah, absolutely. And, and last week, thankfully, there were a couple safety nets. I hit some live odds at halftime for the over-under, hit the over in the uh, Chiefs-Titans, hit the over as well in the Packers game. And, and there was a cash-out option. In the third quarter, because, you know, obviously Aaron Rodgers decided to show up to the game in the third quarter. But I stuck to my guns, hit that over. It was a nice way to round out the weekend. Heading into Super Bowl 2020, if you didn't know, of course, one hell of a showdown. Red versus red. We got the Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. And we're going to talk about absolutely everything that goes on. Well, we will on the field, but a lot of stuff that's going on off the field as well. And at halftime, too. Now, let's get down to it for our next broadcast. Just so you know, we want to hear from you so give us your wildest prop out there and everybody's had some crazy ones you dig hard enough you will find the most obscure most random thing you can find and that's the ones we want to hear about so by all means post them below this video uh find us on youtube find us on facebook twitter you know where we're at and you can check us out there and uh, let us know what you're up to and also uh we've got our eye on the board and have taken a few from last week as well uh we'll throw whatever you toss our way into the archives and coming up next show which will be the super bowl blowout 
an absolute ridiculously huge broadcast where you will be back in the hot seat again. Absolutely. I'm pumped. And also, we really do want, every week, we try to solicit your comments, and we look back and we include them in our recaps. But this one, you can get in ahead of the game. So, like, you want to be part of the show, WSN, the Pick'em Podcast. Hit us again with your wildest props, your wildest predictions, because uh, we want to go toe-to-toe with you guys for the game in a couple of weeks. I'm excited, and yes, I will take over the reins next week, but I had to cede them to you because all season long, you've been the prop king. You've been crushing me at pop props. You've been, I mean, thank you You took a Cole Beasley that. prop pretty much every single week, and I think you just paid off yeah. your mortgage. I, I think I might have. <laughs> I mean, the Michael Thomas at, at a certain point halfway through the year, the, the odds makers figure it out, and they're like, okay, you know, we're not going to pay that much on this prop because he's going off all the time. Drew Brees loves him. But yeah, the Beasley paid off nicely. That wasn't too bad. And the Jameson Crowder was a big one, too. All right. Enough to Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pumping my tires here. All right. For our listeners living in New Jersey or West Virginia, go to WSN.com for special bonuses and deals. If you want to bet on this week's game, well, there's only one coming up. Maybe you can bet on the Pro Bowl. Huge odds on that Pro Bowl coming up. There it is. Uh, you can compare the best legal online sports books and get exclusive offers when you sign up and start betting. Now, when it comes to the Super Bowl props, we've got four main categories. We got pregame, we got postgame, we got halftime, and television broadcast. Now, we'll break them all down as we go. A little flair on that broadcast. Oh, yeah, buddy. Well, those are some juicy ones, but why don't we get in to the, the first thing that you'll see, more or less, right before we kick things off, we've got the National Anthem. And I absolutely love the National Anthem prop. I waited all year for it. Demi Lovato. The over-under is set at 2 minutes and 1 second. And it's going to pay 160 if you take the over. Uh, if you take the under, it's plus 120. So, uh, yeah, obviously the odds makers lean in one way rather than the other. But I'll, I'll give you some background here. Because uh, I, I know you're a big fan, but you know, we'll just we'll just get this out there. Nice Huge. Quick. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> Lovato went 2-11 in her last anthem during the McGregor-Mayweather fight. She also sang a long one during the Mets-Royals World Series. Now, in 2015, Adina Manzel was out there for the Seahawks-Patriots Super Bowl, and she held that note just long enough to take the over. I won huge money on it. Which way are you leaning here? And this isn't like a, I know which way she's going to go, because maybe she'll shorten it up. But, what, like, you know, this is a fun one that everyone loves to jump on. Which way are you leaning? This has actually been a little bit lower than recent years because I believe last year the over-under was set at about 2 minutes and 12 seconds. So this one's a little bit short. So they're thinking maybe she's not going for the style points. But I think that the grand stage of the Super Bowl, it's just too high. You can't you can't just go out there and sing the whole hum version of the national anthem you got to give it your all you got to hold those notes especially at the end because i always bet the over i'm not shying away and i think you should take the over because 201 simply not enough no come on demi lovato you can do this yeah last year gladys knight uh yeah no she's getting up there maybe maybe the breath's not as much you know not not quite in, in large <laughs> supply as it once was yes and so it's so, oh well yeah we'll take the under on that one but uh yeah generally you're absolutely hitting the nail on the head there these singers they like to show what they got i mean look at fergie ferg in the nba all-star game like don't look at that actually that's horrible horrible <laughs> footage she did a terrible job. Uh, will Demi Lovato forget or omit a word? And now we're not just going to throw these back and forth because, I mean, it's total speculation if she's going to forget or omit a word at this point. There's not a lot of knowledge base that can go into that education. However, we're just telling you what's out there. And if you feel like throwing a wager down, now is the time to do it because you're getting good numbers on these. Yes, plus 300. No, minus 500. Um, yeah, it's it's a decent one. If I, I, These professionals at Super Bowl level don't usually drop a word i would lean to the no on that one see this is where it's tough i mean no but it doesn't really pay right so like if you are gonna bet you're gonna bet yes there's not you're not really like unless you're putting a huge amount of money down betting no is kind of but it does happen brian adams a canadian forgot the canadian national anthem at the nhl all-star game that is true so i mean that's it's possible but yeah I, i think on the on the grand stage it seems like it's mostly the canadian anthem that gets botched Oh. In, in these big events, it's generally the Canadian because that's the warm-up anthem. Then you go to the Star Spangled Banner and, and everyone always seems to nail that one. So. This is true. So, yeah, I think I will not probably bet on this one. But again, Demi Lovato is still, she's very young. She might get nervous. This is yeah. one of the younger national anthem singers the NFL's turned to in recent years. 
It's a big stage. It's a big stage, but I, I still think I'm just going to stay away from this one. Not enough juice. Not That's enough fair. meat on the bone. There's not enough meat on the bone. How about this one? This is an interesting one. And now, I mean, let's set the stage here. You and I, we scoured the net. I mean, as soon as that Packers-Niners game ended, all of the props started going up just so these different sites could establish the SEO, the ranking in there. So everybody got a few props up. We found the most obscure. Will any scoring drive take less time than the national anthem? Yes is paying 145 No is plus 105 So I really like this one. This was some great digging by you and WSN.com. This is a Sully prop right here, I can tell. And this one gave me the most pause. Like I had to kind of look around and see historically like what is the quickest scoring drive in the Super Bowl. And ultimately, it kind of comes down to those massive like uh, off the kickoff. It's it's first and whatever in their own zone. And they just a long ball air it out. And if anyone can do it, that is Patrick Mahomes. If he can find like a McCole Hardman on a type of play like that, I, I kind of want to do it. it. Even if just to add some excitement to this game that a scoring drive yeah. might take like 10 seconds. Absolutely. And he, and he was lighting it up last week yeah. with Sammy Watkins going deep to him time and time again. The issue is as soon as the ball gets run, even one play, this prop is pretty much off the board, right? Because that kills 40 seconds right there. You're not wrong. So it essentially have to, if this for this to hit, you have to have like pass, pass, pass. Yeah. I mean, we huh. turn the clock back to Devin Hester here who returned the opening kickoff in that Bears Colts game back in the day. Is McColl, I mean... If, if he gets, I mean, if the Chiefs decide to receive, if they win the toss, I, I see potential there. The other side of things, I, I don't know. The one, th- the, I think the reason that yes is uh, is a favorite here on these odds is because what if there is like a fumble by the offense on their own 10 yard line? Right. Well, arguably, yeah, you can, you're, it's a first and goal red zone situation for whoever, whether it be Casey or San Fran, and they can punch it in. So, on that side of things, you're yeah. kind of just, if you take, if you're betting yes on this one, you're essentially hoping for, um, a fumble in your opposing red zone. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, okay, now we got the coin flip. We got heads, tails. Guess what, guys? It's 50 50. Yeah, it is 50 <laughs> 50. Each at minus 105. Now, tails is hit in 52% of all Super Bowls. I did not go back and do the math. Thankfully, somebody had that stat right out there for me. Tails is hitting five of the last six games. Is this something you like to go for? You stay away from. Oh, this I thing? absolutely do. And I put too much money on this one <laughs> because I think it's fun just to. Hey, I'm either going to start this game on a winning note or I'm going to start on a very sour loser note. And I always bet tails, but now it scares me. Five of six. It's like when you're playing on a hot black run in roulette and you just you're on a heater. Yeah. But you know the red's coming at some point. And how long do you ride that run? Do you keep stacking the deck? But I'm, I will be taking tails for this game. I just hope this is the year. Yeah. Has there ever been a year where it lands right in the middle on the field? There was just an all-star game in the Continental Hockey League. And I saw this on Instagram. Hockey. In the Hockey KHL. In Russia. Yeah. And they flipped like a bill. I don't know why. And it came down <laughs> and it landed like this. So only in Russia. But... Uh, that's that's my only way to answer that question. Now, along with that one, of course, there is the coin toss win. Will it be the Chiefs? Will it be the Niners? Again, 50-50 options there. Now let's get to some more goods here. And this this is a gem of a prop. Uh, you know these are going to see a lot of action. Will Donald Trump attend the Super Bowl? Yes or no? We got yes at plus 450, no at minus 850. So we know which way the odds makers are leaning. It's tough. I would have said no right from the jump. It is like, but it's in Miami. It's close to Mar-a-Lago where he likes to hang out, where he Mm -hmm. likes to golf, where he likes to conduct business. And yeah, I mean, he was a surprise. He showed up to the the college game the other day, right? That's right. The LSU Bowl, the big championship game. So uh, I don't know. It's, It's a tough one. It is tough. Uh, where, where do you lean? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you hit the nail on the head. Geographically, I mean, he's he's got a lot of fans down there. Uh, you haven't in year one, year two, you didn't see him do too much, too many sports, public appearances, uh, just because you know, I guess, I guess the rating wasn't that high, the popularity perhaps. <laughs> However. Uh, in the past year, he attended a World Series game in Washington, a UFC card at Madison Square Garden, and like you say, the NCAA championship in New Orleans. So why not roll the dice on this? I think if there's ever a time to do it, now has got to be it. I think so. And, I mean, he, I guess he doesn't really... He's The problem is he rips apart the NFL, right? Yeah. So, like, he's never... He, he That's go, the thing. Right? Is so, that Mike, Mike Pence went to that Colts game? He didn't. <laughs> yeah. And he left after, like, 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I think that Donald Trump is so like hard fast in his ways that he's like, yeah, I'm, I hate the NFL and that's the way it's going to be. So I think if I were to bet on this one, I would say no. But I mean, you can't put anything past the president, especially like you said, geographically, it, it makes sense. We got an election on the way at the end of the year. He's got to make these appearances, you know, a big maybe, deal. maybe now see, I, I'll, I'll throw this. I'm going to create my own prop Here it is. and see if you're the, the Sully prop master on WSN.com. In the championship game, NFC Championship, we saw Rob Lowe. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Actor Rob Lowe wearing yeah. a generic <laughs> NFL hat and became a laughing stock on the internet. He became a meme because he was cheering for his favorite team, the Shield. What <laughs> if Trump attends the game? Is he more likely to wear a 49ers hat or a Chiefs hat? Yeah, that's that's a tough call. If he does wear a hat, you can guarantee it's a leather strap. We know that much. <laughs> he's not wearing any fitteds with the sticker on there. I, I'm going no hat. I, I think he's going to let the hair blow in the breeze. All that's, right. That's that's the, my take. That uh, Miami wins. The Miami win. Absolutely, man. Okay, now here, here's a better one for you. How many tweets will Trump send out? The over-under, get this, is already set at 13 and a half. This is bananas to me because last year I cashed in hard on the over under and I think it was seven and a half yeah so I don't know why this has doubled but last year I bet the under seven and a half and he tweeted three times yeah this was the easiest money I've ever made in my life it was awesome so yeah I am hammering the under if all these props I think he would have to go on a pretty crazy like tweet spree during yeah. the game it's kickoff to end the like the final whistle so he's got about four hours so he's averaging four <laughs> tweets an hour under this almost. Yeah. Not yeah. quite a math guy, but something like that. Yeah. And yeah, no, I'm taking the under. Trust me. That's yeah, yeah I like that. Especially if he's going to the game. You got to get through security and all that. <laughs> yeah. hey, there's no time to send tweets there. And on the flip side of that, if he isn't going to the game, it's because he's too stubborn and he's just not. I mean, he could try to distract from the game. That was the theory last year. Right. It was like, what right. if he starts tweeting out stuff about world politics? But no, I think he's... He's probably going to golf. Yeah, yeah. It's so, Sunday. Some additional fodder for you there if you're thinking about jumping on that prop. He didn't send out any tweets during the conference championships, but he did tweet when Nick Bosa was drafted. He's a big fan of Nick Bosa. So if he tallies up some sacks, eh, we can see some tweets going on there. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, this one is absolutely ridiculous. Will there be an earthquake during the game? You can only bet on yes because no means that... You know, the, the odd site is going to pay you money, most likely. It's 10 to 1, so let's just pass that. No, but I, I want to jump in on that because they, <laughs> they, they're, 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 they're not on the Ring of Fire. That's on the West Coast, so there's not too much movement going on generally over there. Yeah, so why is the odds only 10 to 1? It should be like 100 to 1. Yeah. They're just protecting themselves. <laughs> yeah, all, on all those because, like, yeah, that was like the bet. There, there was a bet, and again, you probably could have found this through WSN.com years ago, but the Blackout Bowl. Yes. Right? There you go. You could have found a prop that the power would go out and it paid like 100 to 1. I think a few people had it. So yeah. maybe like these. Now we know who cut the power. Yeah. These odds yeah. makers are like being a little bit more cautious. Like, oh, what if there's an earthquake? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So no, I don't go anywhere near that one again. Earthquake during the game. Yes. 10 to 1. No, no chance. Yeah. Uh, that's a good call. All right. Now let's get over to the in-game lines here. Uh, and, and you know, early lines, just throw it out there. If you're looking uh, right now at this very moment, the Kansas City Chiefs favored by one and a half. And that just bounced your scene because it was just up until about an hour ago. It was just one point. Yes. And that's jumping. Yep. So that means cash is coming in slowly on the Chiefs so far. Again, it's very early, but that's, uh, again, and also anything, I, I'm not surprised this was within a field goal, the 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 spread, but it means that, like, they're not exactly sure where this game is going to go. Yeah. And we got two self-proclaimed best defenses in the NFL going at it, and the over-under is already set at 53 and a half. So it's going to be all offense, according to the odds makers here, which I would love to see, as I'm sure everybody else would as well. Now, why don't we get to first touchdown score jersey number? The over-under, and I've just thrown this out there. Last year, he was set at 27, and the first score was down by Sony Michelle, who's number 26. So if you took the under, you're laughing. You're making money there. So it's not set just yet, but I'm putting it at 22, because going down the rosters here, going down the depth charts, that seems like kind of smack down in the middle where it's probably going to end up. Yeah, there's a few interesting names. I would have maybe said a little bit lower, but like it is pretty close. I think when that number comes out, maybe 1920. But number 15 on the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes. We saw his touchdown run the other day. Incredibly impressive. Number 10, Tyree Kill. Uh, but then you get some high numbers in there, like number 87, Travis Kelsey. You got 85, George Kittle. 
uh, you could easily see those guys as like a third down option in the red zone. Um, as for the the running backs, like Damian Williams scoring, he's number twenty six. So yeah, it is. It's kind of a fun prop to do. Yeah. Uh, I would if it say it does come out that twenty two number, I am going under all day. You going under? Yes. Okay. I mean, it, the thing is, like, you look at the Niners receivers: Sanders seventeen, Pettis eighteen, Debo Samuel nineteen. So you're sitting pretty pretty decent there. Depending if, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo's going to actually throw the ball in this game. We'll see about that. Uh, but yeah, and, you know, when it, when it comes to the other side of the coin, McCall Hartman 17, Sammy Watkins 14, uh, last week's favorite target for Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes himself, Tyreek Hill at 10. So we got yeah, those. One, call. What I'm worried about is the Raheem Mostert. Yeah. He's number 31, yeah. number one in San Fran's hearts after that performance on the weekend. You are not wrong. And yeah, he could easily uh, get a touchdown in. But that, that's kind of a fun little prop. Yeah. The epitome of making the most of your opportunity. Oh, and there's a little mustard. Yeah, a decent little. See what I did there? That was uh, pretty my, good. My, my, I can't take credit for this one, but my buddy said, I'm playing some Daily Fantasy, and mustard is a most start. And yes. he was not wrong because he cashed in big. Uh, I know we're getting to the end of the early line, so I want to quickly jump in and say that uh, we're not brushing it over because this is the prop Pick'em show. Next week, we will have the full Super Bowl lines, the one and a half for the Chiefs. We're going to get so into the nitty gritty of that. But this week, it's the prop show starring Ryan Sullivan, and he's the prop master. <laughs> yeah, we're having a good time. Like the, the beauty of the props is that it, it's it's not all business. It's absolutely ridiculous, and you can only find this come Super Bowl time. Your suit jacket says business. Your shirt says pleasure. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You nailed it. Uh, now, here we go. Will a fan run onto the field during the game? This is one that I, I guarantee, I guarantee in the past, somebody has bet on yes, oh, yeah. and then has jumped on and streaked their ass off, guaranteed. Well, it'll pay them pretty good. It's not bad. It'll, it'll at least cover their bail money if they bet big <laughs> enough. Uh, what are the odds on this one? So we got yes at plus 500, no is at minus 650. Yeah, I just can't see it happening. Like, security at the Super Bowl is never going to be higher than it is for any other NFL game. Like it is, it's going to be stacked. Even if a guy tries to even hop over, he's not making the field. That's that's fair. Yeah. So so you're saying that like there there is a pretty high chance, but making that turf is a whole other story. You have to have a lot of liquid courage to attempt to run onto the field in an wrong. NFL game. So already your senses and your sobriety <laughs> are very much in question. So yeah, I, I, if I were to bet on this one, I'm taking no. Again, not a lot of not a lot of juice on it at minus six fifty, but. Yeah. If you want to load up or if you want to throw me like a million dollars, I will put half a million on yes and I'll run on the field. I'll fly to Miami right now. It's not a bad call. Not a bad call. All right. Now, speaking of that liquid encouragement, let's get to the television based props, the miscellaneous. And I love these things. Now, speaking of liquid encouragement, we're going to get to the beer commercials in just a moment. But first off, up top, any prop board, when you look at this category, how many commercials will air during the Super Bowl? The over under is set at 96, both paying minus 120. So they we're kind of just getting into the odds a little bit. Yeah. Usually the week leading up to the Super Bowl is when you see every commercial flood YouTube, and that's when this number is going to change. But in the meantime, which way are you leaning? You think it's going to be a long game? You think it's going to be a quick one? Um. Well, before I get my opinion on that, I got to address the WSN audience because I know each and every week they're tuning in for our football picks. And again, this is the <laughs> prop show. So Jim at home in Minnesota, yeah. I know that you're listening right now. And this is where your wife can play. The, like Anyone is welcome to play the football picks, but I know there's a lot of the casual football fans who watch for the commercials. So go get Karen from the kitchen and bring her on in and let's bet together. So our first one is the commercials over under 96. I am going to take the over, Karen the over because they have a lot of those mini ads those little 15 10 second 15 second ads yeah the little i call the bumper ads and yeah they load up in the super bowl i think they're actually called bumper ads i knew that yeah okay <laughs> all right fair enough uh, all right just gonna throw this out there as we move to the next one for our listeners living in new jersey or west virginia this does not include jim but please stay tuned jim i uh, go to wsn.com for special bonuses and deals if you want to bet on the biggest game on the football schedule you can compare the best legal online sportsbooks and get exclusive offers when you sign up and you start betting and we know Jim likes to bet. Uh, all right, let's move on to the Super Bowl commercials now. How many commercials will have a dog in it? So a little more specific on the commercials, I should say. Uh, we have the over-under at three and a half. This is Everyone loves to put a pooch in a commercial. The over-under, three and a half. Yeah, you ha I think you have to take the over, right? I feel like there was like four or five last year. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it's got to be it. There's dogs in so many. There was a Budweiser commercial with dogs last year. There was like a car commercial. Yeah. Uh, Doritos. Oh, yeah. They'll go heavy. So, yeah, I think over, especially if we figure that over under number of 96, but I'm saying over in total commercials. So, your math, quick math, like say 5% of the commercials have a dog in it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm taking the over. There's been a boom in dogs on social media in general. In the last year, I want to say any singles professional sports team you follow, they post like the athletes and their dog's calendar. Everyone loves looking at dogs. And they all have some sort of like office dog or rescue dog that's oh, named after the team. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, you know, <laughs> 49ers. Like- it's it's Niner. Yeah. It's Niner the Retriever. Yeah, absolutely. I'll get on uh, my soapbox for a minute. Instagram accounts for dogs? No. That's fair. That's fair. I just I, said that because I know you have one. Yeah, I do have one. <laughs> Indy is a great dog. All right, how dare you? Uh, she's a, you know, the reason I do this is so she can make it into a Super Bowl commercial one day. Do you have the inside and then, scoop? And then I can clean up. Yeah, I do. Exactly. <laughs> she is in three and a half on the nose. Uh, which Anheuser-Busch brand commercial will air first? We got Bud Light and Seltzer at plus 125, Budweiser at plus 250, Michelob Ultra at plus 250, and Michelob Pure Gold at plus 300. Yeah, again, the odds makers pretty much nailing this one in terms of depth of variety because I think Bud Light is the way to go. They always kind of throw those ones in right at kickoff. Uh, I might double down on this one or like kind of double dip, I suppose, and go Bud Light and Budweiser and just kind of see where it falls because unless they throw us an ultimate curveball, Michelob Ultra and Michelob Pure Gold. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, probably Bud Light. There's so many Bud Light commercials every Super Bowl. Dilly dilly, buddy. Uh, yeah, the Budweiser, I mean, you're going to see some Clydesdales, guaranteed. Uh, but generally, they've been kind of shoring up a little bit. Last year, I didn't see as many Budweiser ads. I mean, with that said, there's still four or five. So your odds are pretty good if you're banking on the first two there. Uh, which auto brand commercial will air first? We got Hyundai, we got Kia, we got Porsche, Audi, and Toyota, ranging from plus 175 all the way up to plus 400. So yeah, you got Hyundai at plus 175 as the betting favorite. Key and Porsche plus 300. Uh, Audi and Toyota at plus 400. A uh, bit of a tough one. I, I stay away. From, I would stay away from Porsche. I think that's too. That doesn't quite. Yeah. That doesn't like that's I'm not something you. that I, appeals to the mass audience of the Super Bowl. That's more of a Kentucky Derby. <laughs> yeah. You a know? little mint julep in hand and a Porsche. <laughs> exactly. You know what? I'm gonna just go kind of off the board. I think Hyundai is probably the best choice, mm-hmm. but. Toyota. Maybe this is where they make their move. The long shot. You got the RAV4 EV going on. Everyone's going electric these days. I think at some point, all those, all these car companies will have an ad at the Super Bowl. But which one airs first? I think Toyota, right out of the gate. Why not? Start strong. That's not bad. Is that, that's their slogan, isn't it? Start strong. <laughs> it, it is now. Uh, which food brand commercial air first? We got Doritos, Snickers, Cheetos, and Avocados from Mexico at plus 500. I hope... I'm putting money down on plus 150 Snickers. I hope it's a Snickers. They're the best. They get me jacked for football. It is a good commercial. Uh, no, again, it's it's low low odds, but the odds makers nailed it again. It's got to be Doritos. If somebody in the Snickers marketing department is working overtime here, they will pull back. They will do a throwback to the vintage Chef's Chiefs commercial you remember that? The guy painted chefs in the end zone? It The opportunity is there based on the matchup. It's not bad. I'm just saying. Uh, all right, let's get out of these. There are a couple more, but, uh, you know, Will Budweiser, commercial show, an American flag. Yes, minus 500. No, plus 300. Yes. Yeah, it's, that's a pretty much a guarantee right there. Uh, all right, let's move on a little bit here. How many times will the announcers reference, it's been 50 years since the Chiefs, since the Chiefs, the Chiefs won a Super Bowl? <laughs> the Snickers commercial all over it, it again. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the over under set at five and a half. So that's that, it's pretty interesting. It's tough if they get the lead, yeah. And then like in the fourth quarter, it'll just they'll just be saying that on repeat. Mm-hmm. It's been fifty years. Fifty years. I mean, 50 the, years in the AFC Championship, it was at least seven or eight times. So the odds are pretty good there. Yeah, that number is kind of right where it's supposed to be. But yeah, I I, I think the Chiefs will probably win this game, which means they'll have the lead in the fourth quarter. So I am going on the over, over five and a half mm-hmm. references. Of it being 50 years since the Chiefs won a Super Bowl. I feel like that's a lock. Another lock here. Another random prop we found. How many times will a former San Francisco 49er player be shown on screen? The over-under is set at five and a half. 
the last time I mean they were in the show I mean you like there's so many to choose from you got Steve Young you've got Joe Montana we saw Jerry Rice dancing on the sidelines last game this one might be the lock I right? think I think this is the lock I think it is they, they showed Jerry Rice about 50 times in the NFC championship game yeah this has to be the lock and Montana they'll get him there right like Montana will be at this game he has to be he's got to be so Guaranteed. that that alone they show him three four times you just need one more guy yeah uh yeah, this is that number will go up. Yeah, very quickly because I will be going all in on that one. <laughs> now another category you're going to find, uh, and I didn't mention this off the top, it's kind of a side category, if you will, a specialty, uh, is the cross sport props, and you can usually find these on really any betting site out there throughout the year, throughout different games. Uh, but Super Bowl is when they really throw some big ones out there, and the deal with these is that they kind of spread over a few days or potentially even a week or two. Uh, so right now you got the Kansas City. Chiefs winning the Super Bowl and Novak Djokovic winning the Australian Open. Same thing with Federer, same thing with Serena Williams. And then the reverse as well. San Fran winning the Super Bowl, Jovac winning the AO, and then you got Roger Federer and Serena Williams as well. So just some some food for thought there if you're thinking about throwing down some money. I do like the cross posts, uh, cross sports props and the different ways to go about that. I like to like kind of, I like to bundle a little golf prop with a, a football prop and it worked for me this weekend. I had Andrew Landry winning and then match it with a Chiefs victory. So, because yeah. I a lot of times those like Chiefs winning Super Bowl just a straight up bet it, I mean it's it pays 50-50 really right yeah so when you bundle that with something a little bit more hefty like a Novak Djokovic win which I think he probably will well you got a little, a little, they, yeah, little they, spending money they classify it as just like a single prop but it essentially is a parlay you need both to have it is, it. yeah absolutely yep. yeah so it's not too shabby. I know you like your parlays. I'm a parlay man. There you go. All right, let's get into the halftime show here. And now, I mean, I'm assuming you could guess this from looking at the two of us. We're not huge J-Lo and Sh- Shakira guys. I mean, you know, I bought the first album, but then, it, you know, I, I kind of hopped off the bed. You want to see my tattoo? <laughs> Break it out. Break it out. <laughs> there we go. But we will go through the props here. We'll preview them for you, and you make up your own mind on these ones. Uh, here is the most obscure prop, probably of the bunch. Okay. Anything I could find. Will J-Lo show butt cleavage? No minus a thousand. Yes, plus five hundred. Now, butt cleavage. I learned a little something because I did some digging here. It's essentially. <laughs> uh, sorry, I got to interrupt. Hopefully, this isn't on the WSN computer server because this. Yeah. You got to delete your search history. I buddy. hope. Yeah. <laughs> I hope this isn't the little clip that's used on social media <laughs> yeah. here. But we'll go through it. Uh, uh, butt cleavage is essentially like sexy plumber crack. That's what they're going for. Like, there's a little crack at the top. Tom from HR just walked in the room. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I'm, I'm just naming the props, all right? I'm just saying what's out there, okay? So you got the butt cleavage prop if you want to find one. And uh, I mean, that'd be a fun one to play with your buddies. Why I not? do, but like, what... Who, I guess you kind of did just define it, but like, what's to stop the odds? Maybe like, who defines how much crack is crack? Oh, well, no, that's <laughs> I a can't good... believe we're debating this on this show. This is awesome. It's Dave Stinson in Cincinnati. He is watching... Okay. Yeah, he's he's the same guy that was doing the video for the Patriots. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, he's got the binoculars. He's got the telephoto. He'd, he'd, so he's he's I, knocking it down. Well, I know that this is supposed to be like kind of the the halftime show. That they kind of they tone it down, right? Because it's supposed to be PC. Ever since the yeah. Janet Jackson incident, right? But at plus five hundred, and it's mm-hmm. in Miami. I think you have to say yes. She I think, will show some butt cleavage. I think there's some crack coming out. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I do. All right, now let's move on. We got the odds on the J-Lo or Shakira for a song. It looks like J-Lo's leading the bill, uh, but there's always this prop. Every single year, whoever is performing, the first song, uh, it goes from Let's Get Loud and On the Floor at plus 450, same with Whenever and Wherever, all the way down to Jenny from the Block at plus 2,000. I'm surprised. That's the one I'm putting money down on because that's the only song I remember. <laughs> okay, well, uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, it would be, it, it kind of, this halftime show has a bit of a flashback, throwback feel to it, so yeah. maybe it does make sense that that's the song, uh, but yeah, no, I think you kind of have to go with, like, Let's Get Loud would probably be, like, that's, like, the jam, yeah. that's that's going to get people fired up. It's a Miami audience, they're used to clubbing, they're used to the pump-up tunes, yeah, you're probably not wrong on that one, and that's why it's, you know, paying at the top of the bill, so. Yeah, there's a couple here, I, again, I just admit that I don't know my music too well, but Waka Waka is plus 900? It could be Waka Waka, I'm not sure. Oh. Yeah, I don't really know, but it's, it's not, 
listed as one of the favorites. Well, let's just say that much. Plus 900. There you go. So now you also have an outside cameos prop. You got Pitbull, because he's in the song uh, On the Floor with J-Lo. He's paying the, well, the least right now, minus 120. Nicki Minaj sings a song with Shakira. She's paying plus 220. And Jeruel as the outside wild card, because he sings I'm Real with J-Lo. He's paying plus 1,000. Last time I checked, Ja Rule was on Instagram begging to be included in the halftime show. Oh, so yeah. I'm not going anywhere near that. And then Pitbull, <laughs> who's Mr. Miami, yeah, he's he's like a lock. That yeah, yeah, I'm I, I'm I'm sure that's going to be the one. I'm loading up on him. Uh, at least this halftime show is a bit more variety because last year was Maroon Five, and I didn't know which way it was going to go with the songs and stuff like that. But yeah, I think uh, Let's Get Loud will be my song. Pitbull for a cameo. Plumber Crack, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't see uh I would love to see Jerule get there, don't get me wrong, but he might still be dealing with some fire festival fallout over on that <laughs> yeah. side of the map, so maybe best to lay low for a little while. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, let's get to the post game props here as we get towards the finish line. The Gatorade color. Now this is just, you know, you throw some speculation out there and a lot of people love to speculate on this one perhaps more so than others you got clear slash waters pain plus 160 it goes lime green yellow plus 250 orange 350 blue 400 red 750 and purple is the outside underdog at plus 1200 now i will throw a couple facts your way the gatorade has only matched the team's colors three times since 2001 even though everyone thinks for some reason it'll just match the team color all the time absolutely uh the color was clear from 2007 to 2010 who's putting these advanced stats together i don't know scientists well yeah i, I feel like it <laughs> mr <probably> gatorade is. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so well you know it was uh invented in right. the great state of florida throwing I, that out there i'm gonna cede the floor to you who which color are you looking for here well i mean to be honest i'm just going on my gut and my gut tells me that yellow is the most delicious so i'm going with that <laughs> Well, so. your gut tells you're wrong because blue is the best flavor at plus 400. It's delicious. If this is a, a prop odds on the t- tastiness, yeah. blue's the runaway winner. It's minus 7,000 because it's <laughs> awesome. Uh, I know you just said that the it, the colors only match three times since 2001. Well, this is the year of the underdog, baby, because I like red at plus 750. Two teams, red colors. I hear you. Right? I think that, Yeah. It's going to pay. It's, it's going to pay. It's going to pay. It's not It's not a bad bet. Why don't we move to Super Bowl 54 MVP predictions? Now, I mean, we can get into the player stuff a little heavier next week, of course. But let me just break it down by history. Sure. 61% of the time, the quarterback has won most valuable player of the game. Running back, 15%. Wide receiver, 12%. Linebacker, 8%. Safety, 4%. And by my math, I think think that equals 100 because i don't think a kicker or a punter has ever won i was trying to do the math really quickly in my head and you are correct yes there you go uh yeah i mean the quarterback is kind of the way to always go right unless a running back takes over the game like raheem mostert probably really boosted his super bowl mvp odds with that performance in the nfc championship game yep uh jimmy so I, i'll jump ahead a little bit jimmy garoppolo patrick mahomes is the favorite at plus 115 jimmy garoppolo plus 195 how is he that high after the performance we watched <laughs> in the NFC Championship game? I know, I know. He he very well might be the most valuable player for the Chiefs in this game based on the throws that we've seen from him. Now, the if you go fifth down the list in terms of MVP odds at plus 1,800 is really tempting for me, Nick Bosa. Because I think that this is like the national stage, the super rookie. If he can get to Patrick Mahomes a couple of times, maybe a strip sack or something like that, oh, yeah. he's got to be the favorite. Absolutely. Uh, by far, he is the. You work a little, uh, little safety action in there. Yeah. I, how can you? How can you say no to that? Absolutely. I mean, there, there's some other long shots out there that that could pay really well. I mean, you look at uh, Tyree Kill plus 2800. Sammy Watkins, uh, Patrick Mahomes' favorite target, few touchdowns last week plus 3500. So you can roll the dice pretty well on a lot of these guys. Even Damian Williams has shown some great flashes throughout this postseason. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking at the defensive side of the ball, I think that's a, a, a great call. Uh, because, yeah, it, it ver- this might be the Super Bowl that is not the offensive MVP. You know, we look to the defense, and we've seen just how deadly that defensive line can be. And, I mean, it doesn't. it's not all about you just getting solo sacks. There's also assisted sacks in there as well that tally up nicely. Oh, 100%. And, yeah, like you said, this could be the year. I think this game, like you said earlier in the show, these two teams claim to have the best defenses in the league. Well, let's see if one of them walks away with an MVP award. 
Yeah, and I'll let you drop the news bomb. Tevin Coleman's listed here at plus 5,000. Are you going to roll the dice on that? I'm staying well away from him. Again, we're taping this well in advance of the Super Bowl. But as of today, he underwent an MRI, dislocated shoulder, questionable for the game. I bet by the time even this episode comes out, they'll have ruled him out for the Super Bowl. So I'm staying away from Tevin Coleman at plus 5,000. Watch me eat my words, and he gets like six touchdowns in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could happen. That could pay nicely. Uh, let's throw out there. Real Money Daily Fantasy Sports is a great option at any time. People living in a state where traditional sports betting is not legal. Head to WSN.com, and they can set you up with links to DraftKings and FanDuel. You know those sites are going to see a ton of action come Super Bowl time. Head to WSN, extensive odds, free picks on all major sports. Also tons of betting guides for beginners and anyone wanting to learn more about strategy and how sports betting works. So why don't we do like a quick recap. Your favorite prop that you've been looking forward to all year that you're going to be throwing money down is... Uh, When it comes to the obscure props of the Super Bowl, I think I'm going to go over... On former San Francisco 49ers shown, that's over under at five and a half. I'm taking the over all day. And because I love dogs and because I love beer, and I assume <laughs> there'll be some sort of collaboration, I am going to go over three and a half appearances for dogs in Super Bowl commercials. That's well played. And, you know, we'll try and tip the scales. If anybody's watching this right now, if you're selling beer and there's a dog in the commercial, I will go to the liquor store (laughs) during that game and pick up that product. I want in on that prop as well. I'm going in the over Demi Lovato in the national anthem right off the get-go. The over-under set at two minutes and one second. And that over, uh, eh, not huge, eh, minus 160 there. But it's just so fun to bet on because you know she's holding that note to show off the skill set. It's coming. You know it is. So... Until next week, I hope you learned a little something about prop betting. we got some beauties on tap for you. And, of course, more pop up just heading over to game time, too. So we'll have more for you next week as well, along with our picks, our predictions, and everything you need to know about the Niners-Chiefs Super Bowl on tap. For Adam Forsyth, my name is Ryan Sullivan. Stay tuned to WSN.com for much, much more, and we'll see you later. Go dog commercials. Go dog commercials.